the Joe Rogan experience. This idea, this concept is so fantastic to me to take elite gr elite grapplers and pay them for matches and then f stream it online and Flow Grappling is doing this and they're very successful. A lo yes. lot of jujitsu people are tuning into these things and, and you know, it's, it's really become a hit. Um, it, a true key in the development of any sport is some kind of uh, organization which showcases it. Uh, for mixed martial arts, it was the UFC. And grappling always struggled with uh, the idea of showcasing the skills of the athletes. Um, there were local shows. Uh, when when you and I started Jiu-Jitsu, there were crazy local shows where people would just informally come in and compete against each other. Um, but there was nothing that had any kind of overall vision or uh, sustained program over time. And that, I believe, is what Flow Grappling is trying to do here. They're trying to give something... Uh, a grappling version of what the UFC has done for mixed martial arts. And uh, uh, the athlete pay is improved dramatically over uh, earlier years, and athlete exposure is massively improved. So it, it's a very encouraging thing. And I'm, the production is excellent. Yes. It's yeah. really good. It's yeah. uh, great commentary. And it, great. It, it's something where you could take someone who didn't know much about grappling a friend of yours, invite them over, watch it together, and, and they'll be like, hey, that's an impressive sport. And like, it, as you say, the production looks like it's, it's a legitimate sport, as opposed to like going to the local high school on a Saturday and watching you compete and, um, yeah. in, in that fashion. Well, one of the things that's made the sport more palatable is the approach that your athletes take, and many other athletes are following suit, is that it's a very submission-based approach, instead of just trying to score points. Because I think there's been a problem with these rule sets where, I mean, even though Abu Dhabi's done an amazing job of showcasing elite grapplers, there's something weird about their score set system. So the first, was it first five minutes, there's no sc points that, scored? That's correct, yes. And then the next five minutes, you score points. So, so you get guys stalling out for five minutes. So you almost guarantee a boring five minutes unless you have some sort of Marcelo Garcia attacker who just ju just dives on submissions and yes. goes after it right away, which is not the norm. The norm is points-based guys who are just trying to win. That's correct. Um, as a general rule, you know, athletes are smart and they want to win. So um, they will, as a general rule, always try to find the least risky way of attaining victory and doing the minimum amount of work in order to get to a, a win. Um, and yet, the the spectators are demanding something else. They're demanding entertainment. And in the sport of jiu-jitsu, the most entertaining thing you can do is to push the action towards submission holds. And submissions function in grappling the same way a knockout punch does in boxing. And it's the most desired result. It's also the most impressive result. If you think, Joe, back to when you first started jiu-jitsu, what was its primary appeal? Well, I think for the overwhelming majority of practitioners of Judas, it was the idea of submission. Because I think that's the only appeal. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you could ever say anybody, I find it appealing to win on points. Yeah, it's or, ridiculous. or even worse on advantage. Yeah, I, you just wrestle if you want to do yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, um, when, when you look at, uh, at Jiu-Jitsu, what makes it remarkable is the idea that it's a form of grappling where the outcome is determined in a way which it, it's understandable to anyone it's it's surrender you make someone surrender to you like um as impressive as uh, judo wrestling are as sports the mechanism by which they win in judo's case the ipon throw they do have submissions in judo but they're much less emphasized um and in wrestling at pin they're not as decisive like you know it's easy to imagine someone who got pinned with their shoulders on the mat for three seconds but came back to win the fight that's not a difficult thing to conceive of it's easy to conceive of someone who got thrown pretty hard and still kept fighting and won but when you surrender that that's you saying i quit it's over and that's the most definitive form of victory possible in, in any uh, form of grappling and that i think was the true appeal of jiu-jitsu the further you get away from the idea that jiu-jitsu is about control leading to submission, the less interesting the sport becomes. And um, we must do as much as possible to push athletes towards that, that, that form of, uh, that expression of jiu-jitsu. Don't just win by the minimum amount to get the job done, but go the extra distance and try to win by submission. Now, 
you, you just mentioned the name of Marcelo Garcia. He was one of a handful of athletes. You, you see um, Hodger, Gracie was another, who at a time when the rule set didn't demand it, went out of their way to go the extra distance and fight from beginning to end for submission. And what do you notice about those athletes? They're legends. They're legends. They're loved to a degree which all those other athletes, and don't forget, they both lost. Okay, they both had their losses. They weren't undefeatable. But they're legends because of the way they fought as much as for the victories themselves. Yeah, they represented true jiu-jitsu. They represented the ideal of control to submission. And there's a sense in which athletes have to understand if you want to build a brand in jiu-jitsu, you can't just go with that minimalist approach of do enough to win, be happy with that. And you have to go into expressing the ideal of jiu-jitsu. Now, the natural response on the part of many organizers is to try and create rules which force athletes against their will to go the extra distance. That was the intention in ADCC, the Abu Dhabi um, uh, approach. They they took away points in the first five minutes so that athletes would be encouraged to go for submission holds. Now, some of them were, but as you correctly pointed out, most of them weren't. They actually used it not as a means of encouraging submission, but actually avoiding any form of contact and making for a very boring first five minutes in many cases. Um, so what I truly believe is that it's, there's never going to be a rule set which forces athletes towards submission. The way it's going to change is through culture. It's got to come, I believe, from coaches creating a culture where athletes strive for a higher ideal in jiu-jitsu, which is control to submission rather than minimum advantage or points to score a win and, and be happy. It's got to come from a training room culture rather than rules. A good athlete can always game the rules to get the minimum uh, method of victory. There's always a way. Like, just as a lawyer will find any interpretation of a, of a law in order to get the result they seek, so too an athlete can find any interpretation of the rules to get to the minimal win. So it's not going to come from rules. They've tried in the past and it just hasn't worked. In fact, it's actually had some negative connotations, as, as you pointed out. Um, so it's got to come from a, a training room culture, and that's what I try to do with my squad. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.